microphone. Yeah, I'll do my best. The closer you'll be to the microphone, yeah, the, already, the silencer uh, it will be, and okay. the sound is better. This always starts uh, in the solo? Yeah, from the blender it is. Yeah, normally we don't start from blender. So I say it depends how much we have. Yeah. How yeah. complicated the scene is. And we have some uh, some legs still in the game. Sorry, I have to jump. So I think we can start right now. Good luck. Welcome, everybody. I'm just gonna play the game for a short time so you get a good impression of what we built with Blender Game Engine. Um, while I'm playing, I'll just tell a little bit about the game itself. So you, uh, yeah, you are um, Brian Lowfield. You are a convicted marine that uh, has been convicted for a murder he did not commit, and they locked him up in an. Uh, abandoned prison and from this abandoned prison you have to escape it's a third person action adventure game uh, combined with stealth elements and you have different kind of uh, challenges in this game because the main objective is to get uh, to escape unseen this is the main goal of the, of the game and I can show you some of your challenges It's a little bit difficult to talk and play at the same time. Or I can just look here. Why I'm doing it so difficult? For example, these guys over here, they are your enemy. And they are very attractive to sound, so you have to be very silent to escape. And I can give you an example. Hey! The sounds, uh, the, the voices are at the, at the moment in the And you can play the game with the uh, Xbox 360 controller or with your mouse and keyboard. Or, and currently we're also working on the Uja controller support. And we have been working on this game for two years now. With a team uh, about six people, six to nine people. And um, we're in beta currently. And in November we want to go into alpha and we want to release on uh, in December 22. I don't know what to do. What should I do? You see that sometimes we still have a lag. At the moment we have a lag in this level. There's, we did something wrong, I think, with the logic. We're still trying to fix it. So you have these kind of challenges, you know, door locks, you know, typical, typically gameplay uh, elements. So I need to, uh, to get out. I need a key, I, think, I guess. Oh, what's that? I like this game, maybe I just play it for half an hour and you guys just watch. It's another good idea, then I don't have to talk either. Yeah, these are, these are the kind of things that we still need to fix, you know, camera glitches and other stuff. Um. And we uh, attend... Uh, uh, Three com gaming conventions now, two in Belgium, one in the Netherlands. So quite big, first look, Fax and Game Force. And you have your inventory to see what you have collected. Uh, it's a soap. Bend over. I uh, picked up the picture of his daughter. Definitely, this is a uh, placeholder. So yeah, this is... Uh, what we've done and what we achieved till now with uh, Blender Game Engine. And, uh, I'm quite happy with the result. Uh, we still can improve it a lot, but uh, yeah, we really want to wrap it up now and uh, thinking of the release. So I'm just gonna quit it now.
I think I'm the, one of the few that uses Windows as a... Sorry, guys. <laughs> Okay, this is not what I want. Come on. Okay. Well, anyway, my name is Wesley Blylevens. I'm from the Netherlands, from Rotterdam. Uh, I'm 28 years old and I'm working for quite a while with Blender for over 14 years, I think, now, and uh, still enjoy it. Uh, yeah, I already showed you the production of I Will, working on it for two years now, ready to release. And the goal of this presentation is to give you an insight about how we work, things that we come across, and how we handle them. Uh, unfortunately, I, I'm too short in time to go into things to, uh, really into depth, but if you have any questions, you can come over later uh, if you want to have more details, or just buy the game and see how we made it, or torrent it. It's also a possibility. So how did we start? Well, two years ago we just wrote a plan and gained this, I wrote the story first from the story. We uh, wrote down the amount of levels and we, I wanted to have a goal that at least you can play this game for like three to four hours. And from that we cut it into quarters of 15 minutes. And from there we started to design the, the, the gameplay per level so that we had a good overview of, of how much we had to make. Well, apparently we had to make too much. Uh, so we, we um, deleted some levels uh, and ideas. Yeah, this is a part of cutting it into pieces. And doing it completely wrong, I've worked at a game companies before, as a, not so long, but as a professional. And then I was convinced that I would do it better and, than them. And, um, but that was a mistake. For example, we, when we started, we just started making the levels and uh, thinking, coming up with crazy ideas, uh, scripting uh, the gameplay elements, uh, the control, the character, etc., etc. And after one year, I realized that we did almost everything wrong, all wrong decisions. It wasn't solid enough to make a good system where you can keep on building upon. So we had to delete everything. So we actually built the whole game again, and this is why it took, took uh, two years now. And these are a few of the things that I would do differently now. Instead of just making the, uh, the, uh, the gameplay and the levels directly, you can better just focus on the assets. Just let the artist model the assets. You know what the genre is gonna be, you know the time and place it's gonna be, so just let them model for three, four months, it doesn't matter but don't go directly into deep and start making that uh, level and the gameplay. You can write it down first, and that's something I would definitely do differently. Per level, see that, okay, which gameplay elements will I put in this level, what's gonna be next? Then you can see the buildup of your gameplay and see if, if it's good and logical. Uh, not going too fast, uh, are you giving the player a chance to learn the mechanics? So, we have quite some assets, and what we do is we make packages of assets. So, for example, a vehicle asset package, uh, um, pipe assets, um, et cetera, et cetera. And then we link those assets into our levels. And I just want to give you an example of such an asset or such a package. Let me see, something nice. Vehicles preview. So this is just one vehicle. Um, oh, sorry. And why aren't you seeing it? Because I have to do this. So just a vehicle. Uh, this is just one object. But for example, let me get something else. This is good. loading the shaded mode now. Here you can see the packages. So everything that is for the outdoor, outdoor environments, we just put them together, see what fits together, and from there we link them into the blend files. And this way you can really, uh, yeah, can keep track of your assets, and it's better for the artist. If he wants to change something, and we have quite some assets, as I can show you here. 
And of course, organizing your game and your workflow is the most important thing, which something is, seems logical, but when you're starting and you want to make some, something so big and you're new to it, you tend to forget these things. So planning uh, is better than uh, uh, directly uh, going into production. We also use Photoshop and all of the textures are in DDS files, maybe some PNGs, um, because that's the best uh, for, for the game. And if we can make another game, the next chapter, then we want to use Krita so that the whole game becomes open source and uh, also, by coincidence, developed with, uh, by Dutch people, which is extra cool, I think. So let me just show you this. Another mistake that we made is when we were making for buildings, because we have quite some buildings, we were making floors and we were putting them on top of each other like a real building is. Well, that ain't so smart. And if you look at games in general, you also see that they don't really do that a lot. And why? Because of the killing for the uh, assets in your level. It's a, a little bit more complicated. So in the beginning, we were modeling like this, putting floors above each other. And now we are modeling like this, more from the left to the right. So when you want to go up to a, the second floor, you're actually not going above it, but you're going or to the side of it. And if you really want to put it above each other, you have to put a big space between the two floors, which is just better for your cooling of your, uh, of your assets. So these are also things that we just learned by time, you know, and yeah, we didn't analyze the other games and how, how they do it because, you know, you don't think of these kind of things. And these are the things that we have learned so far. Yeah, another thing in Blender is, is the logic bricks. They're nice for if you don't know how to program, you can make some funny things with it, but really in, in a production like this, you don't want to work with the logic bricks. So we try to avoid them as much as possible. And we really make use of, of, uh, of properties a lot um, because it just makes it more solid, less buggy, and we are more in control. And I'm gonna show you right now what I mean. For example, our light source. Oh. I have here a picture of, uh, of our light system. We just have one light that uh, causes the shadow. This is the only way that you can keep the frame rate acceptable. And what we do is we have those cubes all over in the level and the light just follows you and follows and gets the settings from the cube. And as you can see here at the right, you see the properties. Uh, and we almost do that for all gameplay objects, for doors, uh, puzzles, sounds, pickups. Uh, with a ray cast, we check what the properties are and then we see what we have to do. And uh, this works quite well. You have various settings. The light source is just a property that the engine knows that the light should go here. RGB, we can set the color values, the fall of the amount of uh, how fast it, uh, it uh, changes. The distance, so at what distance it should be activated. And color speed, how fast do you want it to color blend. And blend is if it actually has to blend or not. And the strength, how strong the light is. And what we do is it starts from zero and when you come closer, the value becomes stronger. So you don't really see that we're using one light. Otherwise, you just walk into a room and poop, all of a sudden there's a light. That's something that you don't want because that's a little bit, little bit strange. So we just uh, fix this with uh, blending the light or the value of the light, that's what I should say. And I can give you another example of a door. We just have the cube with the physics. And here again, you see that it's, it's an interaction and it's a type of interaction door the door type is locked, so it means you can't open it. Uh, sound, what kind of sound you have to play, the volume, and that it has a camera collision. And this really works well uh, in Blender uh, because your system becomes much more solid. And then you don't, if you do this with Logic Bricks, you have to check, do I, am I using a keyboard, am I using a mouse? There's all things that you don't want to do. So this is really one of the best ways to, to fix that. Uh, same goes for sound, I can show you the last one. It's the floor. We just search, tell it it has a ground collision, the material, 
and a tile, and we can put anything there. But we have in a sound sound system, we have a oh, crazy amount of sounds that it knows that which how to play the sound when you're walking on a certain surface. Is there anyone that has a question so far? Yes. How do you read the input if not through these logic bricks? Because all the examples so far I've seen of the game engine use these logic bricks. We do it with the ray cost. We ask, we ask which object it is that you are colliding with. No, or I, I wanted to know how do you read the input because all, if all the examples I've seen so far, they have a block for key W is pressed and then you link it to some motion of your character. But if you don't use these, how do you get the input from the user? Okay, that's the next slide. I'll talk about it. Oh, oh I great. explained it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Please, please repeat the question to the microphone, okay? Where you are. You are doing the um, uh, the level design. Uh, you are not putting the floors above each other, but uh, next to each other, more or less. That was for the overview uh, to keep a good overview of the level. No, or? for the killing. That's uh, it. Kills better the assets away. Because the calling doesn't like it when there's not enough space between you, he doesn't know what to do. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's really something in Blender or in general, but you see, and I pay attention, especially to the PlayStation 2 generation games, that they almost don't do it, uh, built above each other. And another thing is with the light example, it's also easier for us when we just keep, keep everything straight, because if a light has to go one floor above, we also have to check that, yeah, is it not too high, not too low? Is it really that, that room that the light has to go through? So that also that is an advantage for us to, so to work like this. So it's more creating space in the, in the environment to keep the, the calculations down, let's say. Yeah, to, to actually to give the engine a chance to handle it better. That's, that's what it's all okay. about. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. No questions any further? I see another hand raised. Just two then, because I'm a little bit short of time. Um, what was your motivation to go with the Blender game engine? Because I love Blender. <laughs> because I know that it was possible to make a game like this with Blender. Uh, and I just wanted to prove it. It's been a dream for me for, like, uh, for a long time. And to keep it short, um, I've, been, I've been busy with game development for a long time. And 13 years ago, Blender was like the only package available that you can actually make a game and create anything with it. Not, not that you're stick to a first-person shooter like uh, the Unreal or the SDK at the time or the Source Engine. It was really a free and open thing. You can do anything that you want. And it was the only thing that was free available. Uh, nowadays, it's changed a lot. The indie, indie, indie industry has changed with more opportunities. But 13 years ago, that was completely different. Uh, so yeah, it's more of a dream and a, the love for the, uh, for, for the software. No questions? Okay. Um, yeah, so the question about the input. We uh, made the character the first time and it was really horrible. We just had a, like a, the mesh of the, of, the, of the player and then we, did, we just had empties everywhere around it following the player and I was like, oh, this is not gonna work. <laughs> So we just throw away everything and we st started from scratch again and we just sit down for like three days with uh, three guys. One of a friend of mine, Robert Saunders, helped me. He had uh, like 25 year experience in programming and we come up with this solution. Um, as it says, again, take the logic brick and run. Like I said, you don't want to stay in Blender uh, when it comes to the programming. Why do you want to have control of what's going on? So take the logic brick and run away as fast as you can. Um, you see there the input, uh, keyboard, mouse, and Xbox controller, Uja controller, but they're actually the same. It goes into a Blender controller, the Python, and then it goes to our stuff. And what we actually did is we built a command pattern for the input. And this works really well, and we just take, really take our time to make this so solid. Why? Because from that point, we can build upon it. And even till now, 
I think it was almost like eight months ago, we didn't touch it anymore. We just built it one, one time right, and we can, can, uh, could continue uh, from that point. So what it does is just takes the input, translates it into a command, put that in a stack, and it just pops up the commands from the stack and tell the, tells the, the, the player what to do, walk, turn, uh, so on and so on. The same goes for the camera. Just a stack with commands, that's all. And later we actually realized that we built a command pattern. Um, and another important, really important thing of our system is the state system. In the beginning we, we just have like if and else statements all over the place. If it's not Monday, you're not crouching and you're not turning and not uh, doing something crazy, then you are allowed to open the door. That ain't gonna work. So we had to come up with something else and we come up with a state system. And what we actually do is the following. Uh, let me show you. Well, sorry, what do you mean? Sure, yeah, sure, thanks. Thanks, yeah. Um, this is our string library, and this is how we handle it. It's a uh, it looks a little bit chaotic, but it works really well. And what we actually do is we make different kind of states. The player can only have one state at a time. And what we tell the player is that, listen, when you're in this state, you are allowed to have another state. For example, if you are in a shaft and you're crouching, you can't stand up. And what we do is we just tell that here which state it's allowed to go. So then we don't have to make an if statement because it just knows that it can only go to states that are allowed in a certain state. And this works very well. Um, yeah. After that, we, we the system became so much much more simple, and uh, you can also uh, activate states from another state. It's a little bit uh, technical, so if you really want to see it more in depth, just come over after the presentation. I'd uh, love to show you how we build it. Uh, and to come up with this command pattern and the state system just took about like three days in pair programming, and from there we just built the rest. And then I have to press F5. F5, you said? F3? <laughs> Just press every F that you have. <laughs> so uh, the new refactored system is our AI system. You just saw the guard. We don't use a navigation mask in Blender. Why? Because we want to have control again. I really don't like it that it's not full screen. I'm so sorry. Stupid. You should. I should go to Linux, and not stay with Windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this, this is my punishment. As you can see here on the screen, you see certain waypoints, and we use the A, a star algorithm to 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 build a path for the enemies. And the enemy can actually also put uh, a new waypoint in the level in real time. For example, when you're kicking somewhere, making sound, he just put a waypoint there and build a path through it. So he comes to see and check what you're doing. Because sound is uh, also an important thing of our uh, one of our game mechanics, and we have uh, different enemies like dogs, cameras, and helicopters, and we are building a, an enemy manager so that there is an overall manager that knows what what the player is doing, what's going on, and then the enemy manager can start making new situations. For example, when you're kicking somewhere, he can send a guard, tell another guard that listen that he needs some help, go there, check what's going on or the dog is barking, then the enemy knows, the enemy state manager knows that the dog has uh, discovered something, warns the guards, two guards can, the two nearest guards can go there, etc., etc. So that's really nice and it's really becoming an, an advanced uh, system. It's an enemy, uh, it's a state pattern that, they're, that they built. I didn't make the AI system, so I don't know 100% in depth uh, how it works. And also uh, crazy stuff like uh, that they can walk on the stairs. You know, for us that's really nice when they can do it, uh, when they achieve it. Uh, that's nice. Where's my mouse? Here. Mousey, mousey. I have one minute left. Um, yeah. Well, 
I just wanted to talk about these things when I have some time left, but I think I'll just answer the questions for now. Does anyone have a question so far? Yes. Yes, it will be distributed through Steam and Desira, and we're also thinking of retail distribution, but we're seeing the possibilities. License. <laughs> license. What license? Exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not true that you can't release uh, GPL license products on Steam. We are greenlit by Valve itself, and um, we have a launcher where we do the DRM check, and later in the game, somewhere else, we do again a check to see uh, whether it did, that you really got the copy legal. Of course, you can continue like this forever. You can break it, blah, 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 blah. It's a sort of small check to see that you get it legal or not. Um, but we don't want to spend too much time on, on security issues. We just hope that people that like it support us and buy it. And if not, then you can also torrent it. But it is possible to release a game on Steam with Blender. Yeah. Source code. <laughs> what did you say? I didn't hear you. Source code. Source source source. Yeah, the source code is available. You can just check it. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it's open source. You can uh, check everything, the assets, the whole game, everything. I think that uh, something that uh, uh, is something that we really should do. People can learn from it, but also we can learn from it. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have enough time to refactor everything because <laughs> there is some ugly goat in it, but we hope that if we sell enough, we can make another game and we will make a better system. And at the end, we want to see that we can make some sort of template that we can give back to the community uh, so that you can easily also make your own games uh, with this system. The last thing that I want us to show is that we, uh, we also did motion capture. Ah, so much to tell. Uh, it was uh, the School of Art and Design in Rotter Rotterdam supported us uh, to do the motion capture. We're really thankful for that because everybody was nagging about the animations. And um, we recorded uh, the motion capture, uh, put it into Motion Builder, and then later we cleaned it up in Blender with a, with a script that was somewhere on, the, for, on BlenderArtist.org. And um, that's how we got the motion capture into Blender. We also shared the motion capture data uh, on the Blender Arts form, you can download it if you like. We are finished. Thank you. Thank one, you. Last, one last thing, sorry. Um, I'm going to set up a computer upstairs. If you like, you can play the demo till the end, if you're good enough. Thank you, guys.